A similar definition of recession. Substantial job losses and mass layoffs. Businesses shutting down. Private sector activities slowing considerably. Family budgets under immense strain. In some, a broad-based weakening of our economy. That is not what we're seeing right now when you look at the economy. The U.S. economy shrank once again in the past three months, unofficially signaling the start of a uh, uh, recession. I mean, that's simply how people define recession. Now, if you look at the data, the gross domestic product of the United States shrank at an annualized rate of 0.9 percent in the past three months after having decreased by an annualized rate of 1.6 percent in the previous quarter. So that's two consecutive quarters of decreasing GDP in the United States. That means that the United States, the world's largest economy, has entered a recession. However, high officials in the United States are reassuring us that is not the case. Here's what they said. That doesn't sound like a recession to me. I don't, I do not think the U.S. is currently in a recession. Even if that number is negative, we are not in a recession now. I will say that uh, the textbook definition of recession is not, is not two negative quarters of GDP. The Biden administration is reassuring us that everything is fine. As you heard, the Secretary of the Treasury, Janet Yellen, uh, she is saying that this isn't a recession. This is, quote, a transition in which growth is slowing, a transition in which growth is slowing, she says, not a recession. Now, uh, this is a similar thing in response to the issue of inflation. Inflation in the United States is at a 40-year high, and we've been reassured by U.S. officials this is simply a matter of transition. However, the inflation has continued. It has continued to be an issue. It's not simply a temporary issue of transition. It's continuing to go on. Now, at this point, in response to this issue of inflation, we have the Biden administration spending billions of dollars with a law that they call the Inflation Reduction Act of 2022. Uh, this is how Americans responded to this bill. Democrats just unveiled the Inflation Reduction Act. Someone please tell Dems that tanking the economy with tax hikes and bad policy is a crappy way to tackle inflation. Only the government could propose a bill to increase spending and call it the Inflation Reduction Act. Remember. They always name the bills the opposite of what they actually mean. In any other business, this would constitute fraud and false advertising. So, to combat inflation, the government is about to approve $750 billion in new spending and calling it the Inflation Reduction Act. Spoiler alert. Democrats' new spending bill, that they're calling the Inflation Reduction Act, will only increase inflation. Now, the soaring prices for just about everything are squeezing America's working families as they're struggling to pay their bills, pay for necessities, and keep the households running amid the rising costs. At this point, we've seen the U.S. stock market tank. The S&P 500 is down by 15 percent. Uh, home sales have slipped this year, and consumer confidence is low. Many are looking on and wondering if this could be yet another nail in the coffin of the Biden administration. Janet Yellen has been consistently wrong when she was the chairman of the Fed and when she was on the board of the Fed and now as a Treasury secretary. The root causes of the problem are too much debt, too much credit, too much leverage, and too much money printing for two decades. Oh, now it's coming to bite them. I think the recession started long before this GDP ne negative GDP print. So. You know, if they want to put lipstick on a pig, it's never going to turn into a supermodel. A recession, we're in a recession, we've been in a recession, they can lie as much as they want. It wouldn't be the first time, so I don't know why anybody's shocked about it. Inflation is at all-time highs. We're not comparing like and like, because in the 1980s, if you use the same methodology to calculate current inflation now, it's probably closer to 20%. What people are not talking about as well, is the amount of debt that's been accrued during these negative interest rate years. So now you've got debt from these zombie corporations, and there are a lot of them, that can never be repaid. So you've got probably $6 trillion worth of triple B and junk bonds that have to be refinanced. So you will see a massive amount of defaults and bankruptcies 
that will cause the coming crisis. You know, she said, uh, I think two years ago or three years ago, we'll never see another crisis in a lifetime right before COVID. I mean, she's been consistently wrong. She's been saying inflation is transitory. Inflation is transitory until six months ago. So why would you believe people that are consistently wrong? The problem is we're going to the same people who created the problems for a solution and they have no solution and we have no leadership.